do yourself the favor. Replace toxic positivity with constructive personal realism. Expressing the idea of toxic positivity, for example. I had this experience on a chat forum or chat lounge just a couple days ago. Dude, why are you exploring ideas that interest you on an open forum on that topic? I said that I didn't care and already told you that you and the other guy you're open-minded talking to are wrong. You're wrong, man. JFC, let it go. Another example. Imagine a person who is just too zoned out, that he told you to lighten up, or look at the bright side, when you tell him there is a fire and flood in the building, city, and forest next door. He might say, let the sky and lava do their thing because the sky and lava deserve to do their thing too, man. This event is going to enrich the soil. Instead of making things better or accepting reality, the approach above prevents realistic concern and so makes an affront of a happy message that in truth has very dangerous consequences. Expressing the idea of constructive personal realism, for example. I first thought of the term constructive realism for this video, but it was taken, so I looked it up and actually found readily that the term applies, and it fits theoretically in the formal history of the notion to add the word personal and talk about that. In other words, I don't have to define constructive realism. I will read from Wikipedia. Constructive realism is a branch of philosophy, specifically the philosophy of science. It was developed in the late 1950s by Jane Lovinger and elaborated in the 1980s by Fritz Wallner in Vienna. In his paper abstract on constructive realism, Wallner describes it as follows. Traditional convictions regarding science such as universalism, necessity, and eternal validity, are currently in doubt. Relativism seems to destroy scientific claims to rationality. This paper shows a way to keep the traditional convictions of scientific knowledge while acknowledging relativism. With reference to the practicing scientist, we replace descriptivism with constructivism. We modify relative validity with the claim to understanding, and we offer methodological strategies for acquiring understanding. These strategies we call strangification, which means taking a scientific proposition system out of its context and putting it in another context. We can thus see the implicit presuppositions of the given, prep, given proposition system by means of the problems arising out of the application of this procedure. Such a change in the understanding of science holds important consequences. Within the philosophy of measurement, Jane Lovinger described the relation between a construct, scientific model, or construction of reality, and the reality itself. Now referred to, <clears throat> now referred to as construct realism, recognized chiefly in philosophy of measurement, psychometrics, Lovinger's view is expressed in the following quote 
in the context of real human traits, cognitive and or behavioral patterns that tend to occur together. A dictionary definition of construct is something constructed, specifically, in psychology, an intellectual synthesis. In the present paper, both construct and trait are used in their general or dictionary meanings. Connotations of depth, level, or locus are specifically disclaimed. Traits exist in people. Constructs, here usually about traits, exist in the minds and magazines of psychologists. Armchair psychologists? Chat room psychologists? Right side psychologists? Hmm, that's just my comment. <laughs> Construct connotes construction and artifice. Yet, what is at issue is validity with respect to exactly what the psychologist does not construct. The validity of the test as a measure of traits which exist prior to and independently of the psychologist's act of measuring. It is true that psychologists never know traits directly, but only through the glass of their constructs. But the data to be judged are manifestations of traits, not manifestations of constructs. What does this relate to constructive personal realism? I skipped over one line. People have constructs too, but that is outside the present scope. That was Jane Lovinger writing in the 1950s. The fact that people have constructs are within the present scope of this video. I'm going to display on the page some comments I saw on a video yesterday, which are absolute blathering trash assertion on a flooding state of emergency news video regarding Pemberton, BC, January 30th, 2024, there are comments basically laughing at the fact that reality is happening. See these comments? And see that one comment about a Hamas tunnel under Pemberton? Well, they, these, these commenters seem happy, so I guess they're positive. That's positive, man. Let it go, JFC. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> enough of that. We need constructive personal realism and to get rid of toxic positivity. This is positive. It's just not toxic. <laughs>